Hello! In this video, let's practice more finding partial derivatives. So for the equation number one, they ask us to find a partial derivative with respect to x of the given function that depends on x and y, 3x to the 5 plus 2x cubed times y squared plus 9xy to the 4. So as you remember, if we're taking derivative with respect to x, we only imagine that x is a variable and everything else is a constant. That's this whole idea of taking derivative with respect to some variable. Everything else counts as a constant. Thus, 2x cubed times y squared is not a product rule anymore. So, f partial derivative with respect to x, which also we can denote as df dx, will be, it's the same thing I just wanted to show you, 3 times 5 is 15x to the 4 plus 2 times y squared, that is a constant, multiplied by derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared plus 9y to the 4, that is a constant, times derivative of x, which is just 1. Simplifying will get us to 15x to the 4 plus 2 times 3 is 6 x squared y squared plus 9 times 1 is 9 y to the 4 and that is the answer. Let's practice a little bit more. For this question they ask us to find partial derivatives of the function c that equals to natural logarithm of a plus square root of a squared plus b squared. So if you want to see a as x and b as y, that, that might help you, but you don't have to actually. It's just two variables, you know, and c is your z output if you want to see it this way. First, partial derivatives, if they don't indicate which ones, they mean it means they want you to find both. f with respect to x, but in this case it's a, which is partial derivative and it's no f here it's actually called c this is a function called c so let's be consistent c, derivative of c with respect to a which is dc over d a c a is a variable doesn't really matter the beginning will be the same this is chain rule for chain rule i need to see that logarithm function is uh, going first so i need to differentiate logarithm of something inside remember we kind of imagine it logarithm of u derivative of logarithm is one over everything inside so it's going to be one over a plus square root of a square plus b square multiplied by the derivative of the function inside there's no square root here let me fix that yes now multiplied by the derivative of the function inside. What is derivative of the function inside with respect to a? With respect to a, we are going to have, let be, let's be careful here, a gives me 1 plus square root will be, if you don't remember, we write it as a squared plus b squared raised to the 1 half. 1 half goes down and becomes raised to the negative 1 half. So 1 over 2 square root of a squared plus b squared. But also chain rule starts here times the derivative of the function inside of the square root with respect to a again. Derivative of a squared gives you 2a. Derivative of b squared gives you 0. So this how it should look like. Let's see if we can simplify that somehow. It's going to be a fraction. 1 plus, so this 2 and 2 cancels out. Then it's going to be a over, over a square root of a squared plus b squared divided by a plus a square root of a squared plus b squared. Looks very messy. Let's uh, try to create common denominator. Yeah, that should work. Let's see. If I have a plus a square root of a squared plus b squared at the bottom, and then the fraction at the top will have a common denominator, 
which is a square plus b square, right? Then this should be multiplied by the a squared plus b squared. So it's going to be a square root of a squared plus b squared plus a. As you can see, it's the same thing as in the denominator. So let's see if they cancel out. There will be one, one fraction. Whatever is in the denominator should stay in the denominator. What do I see in the denominator? I see this square root, a squared plus b squared, and I see this part, a plus a square root of a squared plus b squared also stays in the denominator. The numerator is a square root of a squared plus b squared plus a and this is what I hoped to cancel out cancelled out so the answer will be the final answer is just 1 over a square root a squared plus b squared put it in the box and this is only partial derivative with respect to a we still need to find the partial derivative with respect to b so let's do that over here that was step one. Step two, partial derivative of the function c with respect to b, which is also can be written as dc db, will be, what is the original function? Still log. Logarithm has the same beginning, 1 over a plus, 1 over everything inside. a plus a square root a squared plus b squared times derivative of the function inside. But now derivative of a is 0. So I only need to differentiate the square root. Square root gives me 1 over 2 square roots of a squared plus b squared times derivative of a squared plus b squared. Now it's 2b. As you can see, there is a difference here. 2 cancels out. And there is... The answer will look like so b let me check everything carefully yes looks very good to me that will be a little bit easier b is the only thing at the numerator and denominator has a plus a square root a squared plus b squared parentheses times a square root a squared plus b squared close parentheses uh, we can multiply this out and then the square root will help a little bit. Square root times square root, you know, will make it easier. So let's try. B stays at the denominator. If I start distributing, it will be A times the square root A squared plus B squared plus square root times square root go, makes it just A squared plus B squared. A squared plus B squared. Some unnecessary simplification in my point of view. But here it is, the second answer, uh, the one more partial derivative, in this case, with respect to b. Move on to the next question. The next question asks me to find a second derivative with respect to x of the function z equals y tangent 8x. Uh, you have to find the first derivative first. So step 1, the first derivative of the function z with respect to x will be so again i see only x here is a function multiplied by 8 but it is inside of tangent multiplied by the constant y so since it's a constant y it's not a product rule it's going to be y times derivative of tangent is secant squared of 8x times derivative of the function inside derivative of 8x is 8 now I will repeat the process and I will find second derivative of z again with respect to x. So it is dx dx. Sometimes you can call it zxx like so. That is going to be again there's no product rule so it's actually not as challenging as you might think. Everything else is a constant so 8y as a constant just stays over here times 
Uh, 2 goes down. Now the chain rule starts. So secant squared, 2 goes down. Secant of 8x multiplied by the derivative of secant. Derivative of secant, remember, it is secant of 8x tangent of 8x. That is just derivative of secant times times the derivative of the function inside. 8x gives you 8 again. So I'm just differentiating this part. This is huge chain rule and I finish differentiating it like so. Chain rule. But there was this 8 in front of it. So here it is also 8 in front of it. So if you want to simplify it, I just need to multiply out the constants. 8 times 8 and times 2 64 times 2, 128. Y secant times secant gives you secant squared of 8x times tangent of 8x. And that is the final answer. This one, I agree, is a very nice simplification. Definitely makes it look better. One more question. What is a derivative with respect to x of the integral from y to x of cosine t to the 8 dt? Well, derivative with respect to x of the integral y x cosine of t to the 8 dt, where t is a dummy variable if you remember. So it can be anything. Since differentiation happens with respect to the same variable as here at the very top, this is important, it should be at the top, then differentiation undoes the integration and you just plug this variable inside, um, also taking into account the chain rule. If x squared, for example, then you have to multiply by 2x and so on. Review calculus 2 or calculus 1. Depends um, in which class you guys covered first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. It is also important to understand that in these circumstances, circumstances this is a constant at the very bottom. y is a constant while x is a variable. So the answer will be just cosine of x to the 8. That's it. I just plugged in my x inside of the function instead of t t was a dummy variable, dummy variable so that's it differentiation and does integration that just makes sense and the final question is finding all partial second partial derivatives of the given function let's do that all second partial derivatives are f x y f y x f x x and f y y but you first need to find f x with this so first derivative with respect to x x cube gives me 4 times 3 x squared times y y is a constant minus 7 x y is just 7 y squared 7 x y squared is 7 y squared because x prime gives you 1 nice from here i immediately can find f x x so I'm repeating with respect to x while my brain is still keeping, keeping in mind that x is a variable. So this is 12, but you actually can just keep writing it down and simplifying at the very end. 4 times 3 times 2, derivative of x squared is just 2x, so that's the only part here which was differentiated, times y minus 0, right? That is my derivative with respect to x and with respect to x one more time. 4 times 3 times 2 is 24 times x, y. And this is the answer number 1, the one they ask us to find. Then I also can find right away derivative with respect to x and y. So I'm still looking at the same line in number 1, right? But now I need to remember that y is a variable. Since y is the variable, 4 times 3 and times x squared now is a constant and derivative of y is 1 and derivative of negative 7y squared is not 0 anymore it's 14y 
So if you simplify this, it's going to be 12x squared minus 14y. Now, to find fyy and fyx, we need to find fy first. So I'm going back to the original function. Here it is. And now I'm starting, I want to differentiate this original function with respect to y. 4x cubed is a constant. 3 to 4 y is 1. Minus 7x is a, is a constant. 3 to 4 y squared is 2y. From here, I am definitely need to find second derivative with respect to y and with respect to y. 4x cubed gives me 0. 0. Minus 7x and 2 are constants. Derivative of y is 1. So the final answer will be minus 14x. If you remember that uh, for continuous functions f, x, y should match with the f, y, x, then technically speaking you don't have to recalculate it again. But it's nice to do it to check you did, that you did not do a mistake. And again, uh, some functions are not continuous, so that might be a problem. In this case, you see this first notation tells me that I need to look here with to the first derivative with respect to y, and now start differentiating it with respect to x. 4x cubed, 4x cubed gives me 12x squared minus 7, 2, and y are constants, while x now is a variable, so times 1. The answer is 12 I'll even write it down over here times 1 12 x squared minus 14 y I wrote it down here because it's right below the same answer over here that's how exactly what we expected check mark they did match that is good other answers we were asked to find second derivative with respect to y with respect to y and second derivative with respect to x with respect to x and then mixed ones with respect to x, y, with respect to y and x. And that's all for now. So keep practicing and I think you will just become a professional in finding partial derivatives here and there. Second order, third order, fifth order, anything we ask you. Fun question before we finish. Just uh, extra to check if you are keeping attention and understand what is going on. What is the derivative of this function, the same function that we just worked with, with respect to t? Question mark. I just made it up on purpose. I'm looking here very carefully and I don't see any t inside, right? So there is no t variable. And the answer is zero. What is derivative with respect to x and then t? Still zero and so on. So be open-minded about partial derivatives. Some kind of random outside variable can show up. For example, gravitational forces. And we ask the speed with respect to that force, but function might not even depend on that force at the first place. So the answer will be zero. Thank you for watching.